In today's video, I'm gonna be working on an outdoor table with a modern touch. Now the table took a little longer than I anticipated, so I didn't get the opportunity to design seating for the table. As a way of putting the table to use right away, I did went ahead and whooped up some quick and easy DIY benches. This not only would give me the opportunity to put the table to use, but also give me time to think of the right seatings. Before we get into the project, there's a ton of cutting to do. So while I'm doing that, I wanna take this opportunity to introduce today's sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Blue Apron. Before this collaboration, I never heard of Blue Apron and their service, which is a great way to eat healthy at home. Recently, I've been in the shop making more than ever. The more time I put in the shop, the less time I have for other things, which is what make this service great. In a nutshell, it's a service that delivers all the fresh form ingredients you need right to your doorstep in the exact proportion and nothing else is needed. There are two types of plan, a two person plan and a family plan. I started out by trying two of their meal first. I tried the soy glazed pork meatloaf and the Philly cheese steak, which was amazing. I like to try new things, but I don't really like to spend the time looking for recipes, going to the store and finding all the pieces that I need to complete the recipe. At the end of the day, I'm a simple dude and there's eight recipes to choose from. Each week you can choose any combination but you're probably like me and never heard of the service or you just never tried it. So for the first 50 people that sign up today through the link down in the video description, you get $40 off your first two weeks. Prices are low as $9.99 per serving. There's no commitment, so if it's not for you, just cancel at any time. Now I can't do a little damage in the kitchen, but I was still amazed on how close my meal look compared to the menu. Every cut in this project can be made with a circular saw, although a miter saw would just be a lot easier. I get asked a ton, so I want to point out this is a water resistant interior exterior wood glue. All the screws I use in this project are all exterior rated. I use mostly 3 inch screws with a few 2.5 inch screws. The first thing I'm going to do is assemble the table apron. All the numbers for this project with an exception for the top is 2x8s. I don't have a set of plans yet, but there is plans to make plans. With the apron all built, I'm now going to work on the legs and first I need to make a mark of where I need to notch out which is going to help the legs sit flush with the apron. I'm using a jigsaw for this but you can also use a bandsaw or you can use a handsaw to cut this out. Now this is southern yellow pine so there is a bit of warp to some of these lumbers and they're not fully straight so I don't exactly know where I'm going to get glue by the time I'm done fixing this in place so we're just going to flood the entire area with the glue. My floor is not straight because of the pitch and other variation going on in the environment. I have to reference off the apron frame and hope that that's straight enough that I can get the legs on correctly. So I'll repeat the same thing for all four legs and before I secure those in place, I wanna make sure that I double check the spacing between each legs just to make sure that they're straight. I know I'm not gonna get perfection using rough lumber, but I'm gonna darn sure try. I double checked a few times the spacing at the bottom and also the top just to make sure that it was super close. The legs look pretty good from the long side of the table but we also need to check the spacing on the short side of the table to also make sure they're straight in that direction. Once that's confirmed I can then take a few screws and run it into the side of those. If you run into a situation where it's tough to square the legs up, don't be afraid to shim it and use longer screws if you have to. Now I was planning to use corner brackets on the legs, but I kind of felt confident enough that these screws are going to be enough to hold the legs in place. I repeated the same process for the remainder of the legs. I installed this middle support down the center of the table. It was right about this time where I decided to take a left turn from the design. I glued and screwed this piece into place. I always buy extra lumber when I work on a project because I prefer to take it back if I don't need it versus have to run out and pick it up when I do need it. It was a good thing I did that because I wasn't happy with the thickness of the legs and I wanted to beef them up a little more. And after putting a ton of glue on the lumber, it's now time to line them up and add a ton of clamps. Putting on clamps can be a ton of work, so I learned a new trick that I can just snap and the clamps will appear. So here I'm pointing out that I don't need this middle piece. All I needed was lumber to expand the entire distance going across, but I'm gonna leave that and just use much smaller pieces and this should be just fine as well. I'll end up using more hardware with this method so the other way is more efficient. 
I installed the two on the outside first, then I made my way to the inside. If you wanted to stain the legs, you may not want to see screw heads going in the side of the table apron. Of course, if you're painting the apron, it doesn't matter. You can just fill the screw heads in and they'll disappear. But if you're staining and you may not want to see the screw head or the patch area, you can then use a bit like I'm doing here and drill at an angle and then drill down into the faceboard. You just want to make sure you have good judgment so you don't exit out the other side. And I'll use that same method at every location that warrants it. I sand the areas down that would be tough to get to once I put the top on. At this point, I've centered the entire top on the table frame and then I removed everything except for the first piece of lumber. The entire top is going to be made of three pieces of 2x12s and a couple pieces of lumber ripped to 2x2s. Now this 2x2 is where the aluminum is going to sit. I also ripped off a thin section of the top side of the lumber and this will allow the aluminum to sit even with the top. Now I'm going to use a couple of these corner brackets that I picked up from the hardware store. These are all galvanized and I'm going to use some stainless steel screws as a way of securing those. Now the brackets are just there to hold the top down. I didn't want to use any screws in the top of the lumber, so I was thinking to use these brackets. I don't think I need them. Now the first piece of lumber I installed, I ended up referencing that off of the larger piece of lumber that I'm now going to install. The reason I did that, I didn't have things glued down at the time and I didn't want to take it off and remeasure. So what I did was I'm going to use that two by two as a reference point now. And now I can go ahead and add glue to those section screw everything together and start finalizing the top. My initial thought was to use dowels as a way to join the lumbers together to make the top. Trimming the two by twos for the aluminum just took off too much material and brought the hole too close to the edge. Now it may look like a bit of an overkill, but that Florida heat may warp just about any lumber. So this is my way of fighting back. And in the middle section, I also ran a few screws right into the lumber from the bottom up. This was a tedious process which I repeated the same steps over and over again. Now I'm not quite sure when I'll be able to get around to designing some nice chairs or bench that's going to fit this table. But in the meantime, I wanted to go ahead and build something that was quick and I wanted to make them out of white because I wanted to see how the contrast would look and just get a feel for the direction that I'd want to go with the permanent design. Now, I didn't run the numbers yet, but I believe I spent around $35 for the entire seatings. They were made on the fly. No thought went into them. Very simple. One thing I did get right was the height. I love the way those feel. There's a great possibility that these benches could be made without the bracket. I just wanted to add the bracket as a way of adding more security to it and to fight against the side to side sway. After installing the legs and the bracket, I then installed a couple of support underneath the chair. And then it was time to add a couple of screws on the outside for additional support. And to wrap up the bench, I drove a few more screws in the top of the bench, then covered those up with some dowels. Once this is all sanded down and painted, you'll never know there were screws here. I'm also going to make some stool type benches that basically take the same design from the bench itself and repeat the same process for these. Throughout the build, I created a few holes in the table, so I'm now going to drive the screw heads in much deeper than the surface, then plug the holes using some dowels. This way I can get a clean surface. And while I was trying to straighten out the legs and get those correct, I created a few gaps going around the legs. So I'm going to take some of the same sawdust, use wood glue, and fill in this area. This is a quick and easy solution to fill in a gap. Once this is dried and sanded, it should blend right in. It's time to sand everything down and I gotta tell you I went through a ton of sandpaper. I used 80 grit first, used about 6 to 7 of those, then I used 120, then I went to 220. And while I was at it, I used a sander also to round over all the corners. And with the sanding being done, I then took a wet rag and wiped the top off, allowed that to dry, 
I then applied this espresso stain which was recommended to me on Instagram. I only put one coat of this on, I applied it, let it sit for about 5 minutes and I came back and wiped it off. And after one coat that looks pretty good. It was a little darker than I was hoping for but I'm happy with it. I repeated the same steps for the other two sections. Once one section got done I then blocked that section off so I didn't get splatter on it. For all the painted areas I applied an oil based primer on it and this stuff just sticks to everything. Rolling took a lot longer than I wanted it to because of the areas I had to get to. I really wanted to spray but I just didn't have the area to set up for the table and I didn't want to spray some and not all. For the protective coat I'm using a spar urethane which provides protection from the sun, also rain and moisture. So I find it much easier to use a broad brush to brush this on and just spread it however you want but on the final coat you want to make sure you start on one side and just drag it all the way out come back and make the second path and then you repeat that again until you're complete. I started in the middle this way I didn't have to lean over one of the ends. So this is coat one I'll eventually put on two more coats. The aluminum bars are pretty dull so I'm going to give a quick sheen to those by using steel wool and WD-40. Now these aluminum bars can be found at your local hardware store. They're not cheap, about $20 each. Now after a couple quick rubs, you see this does clean up pretty nice. Now to install this, I'm going to use a liquid nail. They actually make one that's called Fuse It, which is made for all type of construction, which is perfect for this situation because I need to join wood and metal. I'll link that down in the video description. Now I'm not going to install it right now because I still have two more coats of spar urethane to put on. Now that actually have a yellow tint to it so I don't want that on top of the aluminum. Now this is kind of the look that I'm going for. We're not quite there yet but we close. I'm still on the fence on should I make the bench match the table? Do I keep it as a contrasting feature? I don't know yet so still thinking on that. I would like to know what you think if you was building this table or if you had this table would you want contrasting piece or would you want it all to match? I really can't wait to have many meals out here. It was a little windy out here at nighttime and I decided to put my fire pit on the table so I had my fire dancing all kind of crazy ways but I still was able to feel the heat. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you ain't already. Thanks for watching. Hope to catch you in the next one.